everyone, and welcome back to Deeper Roots. One of the most difficult topics to talk about is death. It gets more difficult when you talk about the death of a loved one, and even more so when they have already been suffering for a long time. That's why the discussion on euthanasia or medically assisted suicide is so difficult to have, but it's also so important to address, especially in a society that is constantly trying to legitimize death as a solution to our problems. Today's episode is about medically assisted suicide, but also about how God's importance on life is to be addressed within the topic as well. The topics on the Deeper Roots podcast are entirely listener submitted, and if you want to submit your own question for the podcast, you can submit your question on our form found at www.ibbvn.org slash deeperroots. On the website, you can find the form as well as the rest of our episodes and the streaming platforms that we're on. If you like the podcast, please give it a like and share it with your friends, your family, your church, whoever, and that way they can enjoy it as well and they can ask their own questions. Thank you for joining us today. Let's get to the conversation. Welcome back to Deeper Roots. I want to thank everyone for joining us today. Today we have myself, we have Pastor Luis, and we have Esther. Today we're talking about a uh, a very uh, touching question. It could be uh, quite a good, a good question for quite a few people. Um, what should Christians believe about euthanasia and assisted suicide? Pastor? Assisted suicide. I'm not going to use euthanasia too much because people always uh, think we're talking about youth in the Asia, but no, we're not talking about youth in Asia. We're talking about assisted suicide, which is what's more um, probably the, the the term you're going to hear on the news today. Uh, so, when it comes to assisted suicide, um, let's start with a little bit of roundtable here, because of course we're going to go to the Bible. We'll talk about the biblical position, but. Uh, let's start with you guys. Uh, what are some of the the arguments that you've heard in favor for mm-hmm. assisted suicide? Well, one of the uh, the person who submitted the question actually included a message. Lots of people suffer as they die. In preventing further pain against fatally injured people, wouldn't it be merciful to ease the dying process? Mm-hmm. Um, I guess another point in favor for uh, for what is it? assisted suicide sometimes people believe that like they uh they're good to go like they uh like they've lived long lives and at uh, at some point they're just uh they aren't healthy anymore they aren't able to live anymore they're just uh struggling on by a thread um at some point some people uh some of the older people just want to go want to go home uh yeah yeah, no, I think that's the main one. The suffering is what I've heard. And, you know, if you put in people's shoes, you sort of get it, right? Of you not wanting to see your loved one suffer. I had my dad with cancer, and that is hard to see. There are other diseases that are also um, painful. So I get the thought behind it regarding that. And, um, but then there's the biblical part and what God says. <laughs> so there's the, there's the human side, but then there's always the higher power of what God says and what the Bible says. Yeah, like, like um, Derek said, it's a very sensitive issue, uh, but we cannot negate what the principles of the Bible are mm-hmm. just because of it being sensitive. Um, yeah, it's definitely hard. Like you said, if uh, especially when you're dealing with um, a, situ- a situation where your loved one's dying or they're they're in pain, you mm-hmm. know, and and of course um, it'd be e- easier just to okay, let give them an injection mm-hmm. and let them die. But Ed, you notice today also a change in terms. Mm-hmm. You know, we use euthanasia, which is the proper term. Mm-hmm. Then there's also uh, assisted suicide. Mm-hmm. Um, death with dignity is yeah the other. that's the where i was going yeah, death sorry. with dignity is the new one that's going mm-hmm. today and it's because people want to not associate it with suicide mm-hmm. um and but it is suicide mm-hmm. if you're thinking about taking your life 
Uh, or it would be murder if you're thinking about taking someone else's life because uh, so there's also conditions where the person is not in the condition to make a decision anymore. And it falls on the relatives to make that, that call, whether to give them a, um, a something to, to, to kill them off, right? Um, so the problem I see today, uh, first and foremost, when it comes to euthanasia, uh, so it's, it's a suicide death with dignity, you know, which I don't believe that really is anything dignity about it, is that we uh, today live in a society that celebrates or embraces death mm -hmm. more than it embraces life. Mm -hmm. um, we're not going to go into the whole abortion issue, but it starts even with the, the beginning of life mm -hmm. where we uh, are okay with killing off an embryo uh, because we don't see as a viable anymore so then at the end of the road when the person's not viable anymore either or in our estimation then it's okay to, to kill the person and when it comes to scripture what's the biblical view on on death is it is that something to be celebrated something to be looked forward to something to be um embraced and let me just read here what it says first corinthians fifteen twenty six. that says the last enemy to be destroyed is death. Mm -hmm. So it's looked at as, as an enemy. Mm -hmm. Death is not our friend. Mm -hmm. um, and the thing is that, you know, first of all, let's talk about salvation. You know, most people that believe in euthanasia and believe in, 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 in um, assisted suicide are people that usually don't, don't even believe in the Lord, mm -hmm. the majority of them, okay? And, and the thing is that you think that by giving them injection and having them die, you're going to be uh, relieving them from their sorrows when if they're not saved according to scripture, you will find open your eyes in, in hell, which is the worst thing you could do. I think but part of the reason God allows so many people uh, time, even in death, I mean, not sorry, not in death, okay. even in, in, in sickness and mm -hmm. pain. Yeah is because he's giving you time to mm -hmm. repent, mm -hmm. to repent from your sins and to call out to Jesus as your savior. Mm -hmm. Because whatever pain you're comparing it to and wanting to relieve the person from is nothing compared to the pain um, that awaits the unbeliever in hell, mm -hmm. to, uh, eternal separation from God and, 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 and suffering. And that's the thing, I, I, I do believe God in his mercy mm -hmm. uh, allows people to have enough time to to repent mm -hmm. and 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 if you're in that situation when your loved one is is, is suffering if god has not chosen to take him yet mm -hmm. uh, the better option would be to try to make him as comfortable as possible right. which today i think it's also something we need to consider we mm -hmm. need to understand we're not living in the stone age mm -hmm. where we don't have access to good meds to mm -hmm. to powerful meds to at least sedate the person and get them to a point where they're not uh, consciously suffering well, anymore. Well, branch exists. Hospice exists yeah, hospice now is, to yeah. help that. I also believe in what you're saying is true, where sometimes people who are not believers or don't believe in God don't think about death until it's at their door. And that's, you know, part of God's also mercy of being, and the suffering, not only death, but suffering, because it makes you think, <laughs> what if? And I do think it gives opportunity for... I, you know, we've heard stories of, because it does happen at their deathbed, people have made a decision and mer merciful is God in, in his love towards those people mm -hmm. that they were able to do that, you know? The verse also that, that I want to read is Job thirty twenty three that says, For I know that you will bring me to death and to the house appointed for all living, you know? Job was also suffering a lot, mm -hmm. you know? We read about not only the emotional suffering that mm -hmm. went through with everything he lost, but then his uh, his uh, physical mm -hmm. uh, health went down. Um, and I'm sure there was a moment there too where he was in such pain that he could have just chosen to die. Actually, that's the advice his wife gives him, right? Mm -hmm. Says, why don't you just curse God and die? die. Mm -hmm. But he, he says, why would I do that? And see the, the value of the believer should be in life mm -hmm. and that God is the one that brings us to that crossing of, mm -hmm. of death that like he says you will bring me to death into the house appointed for all, all living you know he's the one that's that is going to determine that time for us to to leave this um, existence and go in, into his presence if we're saved mm -hmm. now having said that 
I believe having Jesus is also uh, so important as a believer because I do believe, I'm not going to say 100%, I'm not going to put my feet in the water and saying 100%, but I do believe in a lot of the cases uh, when you're you're a believer, Mm -hmm. the Lord gives you a special grace Mm -hmm. to face death, Mm -hmm. even to the point that even if you're in a suffering state, Mm -hmm. that God will give you a, a supernatural ease from that, from that until he comes to take you home. I, uh, pastors, you've heard stories mm-hmm. of pastors being at the bedside of believers and non-believers, and there's a w- reason the, the word is called agonize, to agonize mm-hmm. so when someone's dying, estagonizando, they say in Spanish, mm-hmm. and that's because they're like with this huge pain, not only of their physical thing that they're going through, but also mm-hmm. their soul is not mm-hmm. at peace. And But the believer, you know, even if they're going through pain, even if they're going through those things, they know where they're at, and they're just they they're given this supernatural grace just to wait mm-hmm. until it's their moment. And and he's the he's the author of, of of life, and we need to respect that. I think it's also used, especially if they're a believer. Meaning, when you have a loved one who's saved, who's going through it, the ordeal, um, God uses it for good. Like it touches the rest of the family of maybe those that have strayed mm-hmm. or those that have you know don't want to hear about the lord or those that are not believers god uses those moments to also you know reach out and you know another example of god using the what we see as bad as something good Mm -hmm. for the family itself so here's a question then uh if i were in uh, like just uh complete pain like if i were just going through like a uh like for example, fatal cancer, uh, and uh, that uh, cancer was just eating up my body. Why would God want me to suffer through that and not just let me go home, knowing that I was probably going to die? Yeah, you could ask that of Paul when he said, you know, take away this thing Chill. from me for three times. He yeah. said, you know, basta uh, gracia, which means, you know, give. Uh, I want you to grow in, my, in grace. I want mm-hmm. you to learn to depend on me. Uh, many things God allows us to go through for that very reason, mm-hmm. to be able to grow through it, and even painful things. The problem is that when you say, okay, um, yeah, you can take your life because of this, where, where do you draw the line? It's a slippery slope because we're not just talking about physical pain. What about the person who really is in an emotional mm-hmm. turmoil, a mental turmoil, uh, a, a crisis of their soul? Mm-hmm. Where do we draw the line where they have come to the determination of that it's better to die than mm-hmm. to live. And the thing is that we have to we we have to have a standard. And the standard is that as believers, we are uh, we are bear, uh, standard bearers for life. We stand for life. We're going to celebrate life in every form uh, until God is the one that chooses to tr- transition and is over. Because if not, like you said, then where do you draw the line? Mm-hmm. Where where mm-hmm. biblically and uh, philosophically, where do you draw the line? Which sufferings uh, okay. merit yeah. <laughs> merit suicide, and which mm-hmm. don't? You know, and that's the thing. If not, we go down the slippery slope where we give man the right to take away the precious gift given to God to man, which is um, that. And we and we, and we can see stories after stories of people who've gone through horrible disasters, mm-hmm. uh, live without limbs and everything, you know, and you could have said, well, it would have been better for them to die. Why would God do this to me? You know, and first of all, God didn't do it to them. He allowed it in this fallen world. But God has cho- chosen to use it for good. Mm-hmm. That's where we learn about God's sovereignty, that he's in control. And, and I think we also need to remember that, you know, as a believer, what you were talking about, and you lived your life, and I'm sure you've gone through some hardships there. We always grow from our, our suffering. Mm-hmm. That's part of the, I don't get it, human nature in us of why do we grow more in hardship than in other times? Mm-hmm. That's the truth for a believer. Uh, now in death, just like Pastor was saying, I don't know how many stories you know, Derek, uh, in your lifetime, but you hear it over and over again of believers who have this peace and how, you know, you go visit a loved one who's a believer at their deathbed and you come out <laughs> encouraged. It doesn't make sense. And mm-hmm. that's only the grace of God and um, his mercy and the supernatural that exists you know and a privilege that we have as believers that 
that actually the opposite happens, that we actually walk out more encouraged by the one who's passing or maybe in suffering, which is very different from non-believers. Mm-hmm. That's true. And uh, again, I just hope that whoever's listening, they don't think we're trying to not be sensitive. Mm-hmm. It's a very sensitive issue. Mm-hmm. Um, being in pain recently, <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> there comes a point where you you do say, Lord, just take me. Because <laughs> it's not fun being mm-hmm. in pain. I, I get that. Um, but like I said, the it's, it's really up to the Lord. Mm-hmm. It's really up to the Lord's mm-hmm. decision when he chooses to take me. We're not qualified to de- make the determination when we are no longer of use for God here. We're not. And there's qualified. always a purpose. Yeah, even in always our suffering, purpose, we can be used for God. Mm-hmm. Even in our suffering, we can be used for eternal purposes. And mm-hmm. it's, I'm not qualified to make that determination when my usefulness is done here. Mm-hmm. Uh, I have one more follow up question. What about the do not resuscitate request? Mm. Wow. <laughs> so, like when uh, when someone is in hospice or someone's at the hospital uh someone uh that they are going through uh, whatever like uh whatever the ailment is cancer or whatever it may be uh sometimes the hospital might offer uh the request that do not resuscitate if i uh, am losing consciousness or if i am dying uh don't save my life mm-hmm. is pretty much what that request is what about that one yeah because they are dying, mm-hmm. and it, like I guess you can technically say the Lord is taking them, taking them home, but not what now? Yeah, uh, there I would, I would, I would let that fall under our liberty because the Bible would, does not give us a clear statement for that. Mm-hmm. I, I think it all depends too. Mm-hmm. I remember being in the hospital room with a family that had to make that decision. Mm-hmm. Um, our hermana was dying of cancer and she was in a lot of pain. Um, and the doctor said, uh, you know, if, if she di- if she dies, her heart stops, do we resuscitate her? And I had to be the translator, so I translated that. And uh, they chose not to, and which I said, fine, it's your decision. Mm-hmm. It's, it's, it's between you and the Lord. If you wanna resuscitate her, you can, mm-hmm. you know? But you know she's in pain. And that's where, again, we yeah. go back to the whole issue mm-hmm. of compassion. If we know the Lord's taking her and it's it's un- unremitable, mm-hmm. might as well just let her take her. Mm-hmm. God t- let her t- God, let God take her. So they chose to not resuscitate. And shortly after, about 10 minutes later, she died. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, 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 and they chose not to resuscitate. Um, so I think that's really under soul case. liberty yeah <laughs> each case mm-hmm. uh, you're at, at freedom of choosing yeah. because it all depends mm-hmm. i mean if it's a person that maybe had a heart attack mm-hmm. and they go flatline and you have the chance to resuscitate yeah 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 of course you and know, resuscitate because yeah. you that person could still come back to life and still live it's a just good like life a little kid yeah. drowning in the pool yeah. you're yeah. not gonna say god took him you're gonna yeah. try your very best to <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> you know, get them. <laughs> oh, that's it for the kid. <laughs> You're going to try to reset it. Sorry, something. Billy. <laughs> God's no. taking you. Bye, Billy. <laughs> I hope you never no. work as a lifeguard. No, I was a lifeguard, actually. <laughs> oh, no. But oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's why we joke. Yeah. But um, <laughs> so that's interesting because um, obviously we're talking about it in the case of where, like, there is a, like, there the choice is being made obviously with like a lifeguard uh i don't think kids want to drown um generally speaking parents don't want the kids to drown uh so we're gonna go save the kid because they have a whole life ahead of them <laughs> lord's not taking them just because uh they didn't know how to swim and they went on the deep end um but i when it comes to uh, like an older uh, an older person or like just someone who is uh, doesn't have to be an older person like someone who's uh, dealing with terminally a, a Ill like a terminally ill mm-hmm. person, uh, not resuscitate is a bit of a gray area because like the Lord it just seems like the Lord is taking them but like do we have the power to uh, bring them back which is the same thing with uh, like do we have that do we have that privilege do, not not the privilege what was the word right. that you used do we have right. do we have the right to uh, like do we have we don't have the right to uh, take our own lives or to take each other's lives because we're not the ones who granted that. Mm-hmm. But do we have the right to stop someone from going home? Mm-hmm. Do we have... And again, I don't think we... Again, we definitely want to fall more on the ce- celebration of life or mm-hmm. we value life more than death mm-hmm. kind of thing. 
Um, so yeah, in most cases, if the person has a chance of surviving, yeah, of mm-hmm. course we want to choose uh, life. Uh, but like I said, it's there's cases where you know the person is, is suffering and there is no cure for what what's going on, mm-hmm. and you're just waiting for death. So in that case, yeah, might as well let them go mm-hmm. uh, and and not resuscitate them. You know. Okay. Well, um, I guess since we're on the on the topic of the do not resuscitate, I. Uh, how should that decision be made then? Because, like, obviously, some people are uh, incapable of making that decision for themselves. Uh, so then, f- therefore, it goes to the family. I know that the hospitals probably have their own like line of protocol. Uh, uh, mm-hmm. protocol but how how should that? De- how do you think the decision should be made? Yeah, in a in a situation where you're trying to decide whether to. Uh, you know, resuscitate or not, or also parallel to that is when uh, you know pull the plug. Someone's on a ventilator. Mm-hmm. There's no brain activity. You know, and you have to make a decision whether to pull the plug or not. You know, um, you make it prayerfully and with mm-hmm. and ask for advice. Mm-hmm. Ask for advice. Uh, definitely, as a Christian, pray before you make mm-hmm. that decision. And if you if you have access to your pastor, to your deacon, to someone you really trust mm-hmm. spe- uh, spiritually, uh, as a leader, as an example, you know, call them, ask them for advice. Mm-hmm. I think they will give you uh, at least. Uh, give you some perspective mm-hmm. so that you can make a better decision um, like that's what happened with me because I mean you can imagine the family's not in a condition to make the decision usually at that moment mm-hmm. and they were just like oh you know seeing their, their 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 family member dying and when the doctor came in and he s- said that and I had to translate and then they, the first thing they said is what do you, you think, think? <laughs> exactly mm-hmm. so I'm like my advice was that mana in Spanish, and my hermana, you know, she's suffering, you know, and we know where she's going. Mm-hmm. So, might as well let her go if you that's what I think, but it's up to you guys. Yeah. yeah. And yeah, I they think felt also peace about with, it. with people who are in terminal ill or like a disease, when they're in their right mind, they usually have that conversation with someone mm-hmm. about what, they, what their desire is, mm-hmm. right? So, I think in those cases, obviously, if it came out of the blue and then you have to make that decision, that's a family, that's what pastor's talking about. But my experience is those people who maybe are suffering long term of something, they usually prepare and they let their family members know, hey, if you know god where to take me don't break like let it be let it be mm-hmm. natural and like god's will be done and let it go or maybe not like that's 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 something that you can have a conversation as well yeah okay uh pastor do you have any other anything else you want to add no uh besides just thank you for that question a great question very important question um, I think as believers, we need to value life and we need to depend on the v- giver of life. It's not always easy. It doesn't mean it's always going to be an easy decision in, in our heads. Um, but I just pray that whatever decisions you always come across are always ones that will honor the, the creator. Because mm-hmm. we're not we're not created our, by our own volition. We're created and we owe him um, that that place that he deserves in our lives. Yeah. Uh, Esther, do you have anything to add? No? Okay. Well, um, it's weird how everything in the world just is kind of pointing just to the die, like the option to die, like the the way out method. Like when you're born or like before you're born, there's that option to abort. Uh, when, when you're born uh, and then subsequently for many years after that, uh, there's always that, uh, that lingering idea to die. Um, whether it is a uh, depression or whether it is uh, people telling you to die just because they don't like you for whatever reason, um, that uh, the world is very good at trying to uh, uh, trying to hide the idea of like oh yeah die but we're not going to make it illegal or anything, um, and we know who that is. It's just it's the devil. It's the uh, it's uh, the devil trying to uh, trying to forfeit us the um, the gift that. Uh, that God gave us, which is life. Um, but this is obviously very sensitive because it's like sometimes we are just like some people, uh, our relatives, our loved ones are just suffering. Um, and uh, uh, when it comes to uh, assisted suicide, we've already said we're, uh, what we believe on that. Uh, generally speaking, it's probably not best to uh, go through su- uh, assisted suicide route because people like they're uh, if. Uh, if you want to think of it as how uh, their job here, the job's not done because God hasn't uh, called them called them back home. But when it comes to the 
uh, do not resuscitate requests, it's a little bit more of a gray area. And uh, it's important that you do everything in uh, in humility, do everything in prayer, and uh, do everything with acceptance. Um, we'll be praying for you uh, if that's something that you're going through. Um, and if you have any questions like this one, or if you have any other questions that you want to ask, uh, you can go ahead and uh, submit that question. We would love to hear it. And uh, the link to uh, submit your own question will be in the description. www.ibbvn.org slash deeper roots. Thank you for joining us this week. And we hope to uh, see you. Or hope that you listen in next week. Thank you. Thank you for listening to Deeper Roots. If you want to submit a question, follow up on something we talked about on the podcast, or you want to find us online, you can go to our webpage, which is ibbvn.org slash deeper roots. Deeper Roots is a ministry of Iglesia Biblica Baptista Vidanueva, which is a local church in Castro Valley, California. And you can learn more about us and our church by going to our website, ibbvn.org.